Hello, YouTubers. Um, in the comments to my last video I uploaded, the one where I, I ashed the uh, IC chips in my foundry, uh, someone wanted to see the rest of the process. And I think I filmed this before, but I haven't gone through all my videos to see if I did or not. So, well, I've got some more ash chips here, and I've got to run them through the blender to pulverize them, and I've got to do all the rest of it, so I might as well film it again. So this is the next step. Um, you know, I've got some more, um, sorry about that, kick the tripod. I've got some more ashed IC chips here. You know, they look pretty dark, but if you break them open, they're, they're white on the inside. They've been thoroughly oxidized. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run these through this blender here. It's going to be mostly ash and bits of metal and a little bit of silicon gravel after it's run through the blender. So let me show you how it's done. This is just a cheap Hamilton Beach blender. I bought it at a yard sale. I doubt I paid more than five bucks for it. Um, and it works great for this. And I don't use it for anything else, so I don't care if it gets torn up. But so far, it's working really good. Yeah, the blades look great still. Nice and sharp, even though they've gone through a lot of uh, IC chips. The motor doesn't seem to have any trouble with them. So I'm going to load this up. Not too much. I don't put too much in at a time. And it'd probably be best to be wearing a mask at this point. Because uh, this does produce a little bit of dust. Do as I say, not as I do. Because, you know, you won't be able to understand me if I got my mask on. And here we go. I'm just going to use the beat button and uh, until it can uh, run good. It, it has a little trouble getting started, but... There we go. Now I got nice circulation of the powder now. So it's getting it's getting hammered into a fluffy powder. There's some chunks of something in there flying around. Every once in a while a ceramic IC sneaks past me when I'm sorting the ICs out. So there might be a, a ceramic one in there that's getting torn up and throwing chunks around. When we first take the lid off, there's a lot of powder. You see, that's a nice light colored powder. It's not the black charcoal -y stuff I was getting when I was just pyrolyzing the chips. Now I'm fully ashing them. That's a nice fluffy white powder. And I'm just going to dump this into this kitchen strainer over here. And stuff likes to hang out down around the blades, so get that out. And I'm going to sieve it. See what's flying around in there. Now, the gold bond wires on these ICs, they're going to be small enough that they're going to go right through this sieve. So they're going to be down here in this white, light, ashy stuff. Let's see what we got here. Now, that's a big chunk of metal. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, there's some metal. There's an almost intact die. I don't see any big chunks of ceramic I see. Though so that needs to be chopped up a little more a little more fine. So I'm gonna put another load in. I'm gonna put this stuff on top. It can get chopped up again. And do it one more time. Probably don't want to breathe that dust. That's the way I'm getting back out of the way. Okay. Let's 
Some chips you will find have a surprising amount of metal inside them. Now these chips I'm dealing with here have had all their legs dissolved off in AP solution for a couple of weeks. So there's no leg metal to deal with. But a lot of times these chips will have some sort of internal metal framework for the electrical connections and some of them I think that have uh, heat sinks have some sort of internal framework to help conduct heat out to the heat sink. So some of these chips are going to have a fair amount of metal still inside them besides just the bond wires. Yeah, a lot of what this is is metal. Yeah, there's a few bits of stuff that needs to be chewed up a little better. Yeah, that should kind of go a little better. But there's a lot of metal there. Now, this stuff contains very little gold. Most of the gold, well, let me qualify that. Most of the time, this stuff is going to contain very little gold. The stuff that's too big to go through your sieve. It's going to be mostly bits of metal and uh, bits of ceramic that just didn't get, uh, and bits of silicon that just didn't get chewed up enough to make it through the sieve. And there's, there's usually very little gold in it. One time, I was processing a whole bunch of old memory controller chips from probably the late 80s or early 90s. Big, big flat pack chips. And the metal parts inside were all plated with gold. And I was shocked by that because I'd never seen that before. I got as much gold or more out of this stuff than I got out of the bond wires, which are down there. But that's rare. I've only seen that once. What I would recommend you doing, just to make sure you don't throw away a bunch of gold, is uh, after all this blending and grinding and sieving is over with, whatever is left that won't go through the sieve, wash it and look at it with a loop. And if you see stuff that's gold-plated, process it. If you don't, just throw it out. There'll be a little bit of gold in there, but it's not enough to make it worth your time and effort and reagents. It's, trust me, it's just not. So I'm going to do this one more time. I guess I might as well put the rest of this stuff in. Got to get all the little dust, because that dust is where the bond wires are hanging out, because they're small. Put this stuff back in here, process it again, and run. Right. So, so far this blender has worked great for me for the better part of a year. A lot of ICs have gone through here. I'll tell you what today though, the motor's smelling a little warm, so it may not be long for this world. I don't know. So that's all the chips I had. I'm going to sift this out. Then anything that goes doesn't go through the sieve is going back in here for another grind. more time. At least one more time. This is going to be ugly because there's a lot of metal in there and not a lot of other stuff. Ooh, that's dusty. We stand away from the dust plume. Now that time where I had all those memory controller chips, I had a whole bunch of the same type of chip. In this case, this is all kinds of chips. This is stuff I've depopulated off of all sorts of boards. There's uh, 
video boards, modem boards, all kinds of PC expansion boards, motherboards, you name it. There's all kinds of chips here. All plastic ICs. So, um, odds I'm not going to find a whole bunch of the same type. I guess that's a big die. I don't know why that didn't get broken up. Must have been down near the bottom, away from the blades. Yeah, this is mostly metal. Copper, a lot of it by the looks of it. There's probably some steel in there too. Right, let me get my magnet. So let me check it with my magnet. Oh yeah, sure enough, there's a lot of steel in there too. It's copper and steel. Anyway, I'm going to run this through one more time, because there's some big chunks there. Seems like the less material there is, the dustier it is. Don't ask me why. Oh yeah, that's better. I think we're down to the stuff that just isn't going to break up any smaller. It's mostly metal. Now, like I said, you can just wash this stuff off in water and then look at some of it with a, with a hand loop and just see if you see anything that looks like it's gold plated. Usually if there's gold plating, even in this stage it'll show up but I'm not seeing anything that looks particularly gold in here. I see copper, and I see dull stuff that looks like iron. Let's see what that is. Now there's something that might have a little tiny bit of gold plating on it. See how shiny it is? I don't know if it's showing up in the camera, but it's very shiny. After all this stuff's been through, it shouldn't be shiny. You know, the copper's dull, the iron's all blackened. So there's a little something, but... That's the only thing I see, so I don't think this stuff is worth processing. Maybe there's another little tiny piece right there. That's not it. So I don't think this stuff is worth processing. Just because the amount of gold I'm going to get just isn't worth the effort. So anyway, that's how I get to this stage. I've got a nice fluffy white ashy powder that goes through this um, kitchen sieve. The next stage is get, we're getting rid of most of the ash. And for that, I'm just going to use a, a quick gravity separation. When I do it, I'll set up and film that and maybe in a day or two. But uh, basically, I'm going to put this in a bucket and I'm going to spray it with my garden hose and get it all agitated. Let it settle for a second or two so all the metal falls to the bottom, all of the silicon dye gravel falls to the bottom, and then I'm going to dump off the water. I'm going to dump it into a pan. So that in case I get a little too aggressive and dump other stuff out, I can catch it in the pan. And then I'm going to do that again. And do that again. And just keep, you know, agitating it, stirring it up with the water stream. Let it settle for a few seconds. Dump it off. And keep doing that until the water coming out of here is clear. I've washed away all of this fine, ashy stuff. Thanks for watching so far. Keep it safe out there.